All right, here's the uh, second part of the or games that I want to talk about. I'm, spl I'm splitting this in the parts so you don't have to watch like these hour long videos. And also, I sort of apologize for the audio quality, but uh, if I didn't have this mic here, my audio quality would actually be a lot more quiet and I would actually have to speak like much, much louder, even though, you know, the camera is just that far from my face. But it's mainly so you don't hear the, uh, the motors inside. And... Yeah, so once again, you don't have to watch this. I'm not going to put any text or try not to put any text in the video to explain stuff or videos and such. And just, um, you're supposed to just listen to it. Uh, but, you know, I put a video in case you, you feel like you have to watch something and not just sit in the background. What else was I saying? Let's say? Oh, right. And if you see me looking off to the side, it's because, uh, you, you know, with most camcorders, there's a little viewfinder on it. So, eh, whoops. Show that off real quick. Yeah, so I'm just looking. So I'm just looking off to the side. So if it doesn't look like I'm looking at you, I am looking at you. But I'm kind of looking at myself to make sure I am looking at the camera. But anyways, let's get on to uh, Rogue Squadron, which uh, I was playing for quite a bit and for about an hour and thirty minutes. You can see it on my uh, channel, Wiz Hitman. I'll probably put the link in the description. If I don't, remind me because I tend to do that. Do that where I forget to put a link in the description on certain things like for instance the Sunday showcase but I've been playing uh, Star Wars Road Squad in 3D on uh, my PC and finally finally I get to play it on my modern computer because uh, if you were listening to my Republic Commando video that game the original CD is actually was able to install on my computer something dropped but my Rogue Squadron uh, CD cannot. That game was actually built to be installed on Windows 95 and 98 on a 32-bit system. My system is a 64-bit system, so it wasn't able to install. And I tried looking up solutions online, and I just said, fuck no to all of them. Because I did not want to like mess up my computer and just, you know, cause a whole bunch of problems. Because, you know, I, I spent quite a bit on this computer, and I still want to get a better one with, like, an i7 better graphics card and like more 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 ram basically and and a better mother mother motherboard motherboard but enough to talk about that so i've been playing it and it is and this is all possible thanks to good old games uh anybody from good old games if you're listening to this video i would like to thank personally thank you for making a digital uh digital distribution of rose squadron 3d it is so fucking awesome and the price for the, that they were selling for at the time i bought it is 5.99 so fucking worth it and it didn't occur to me until like uh, until good old games did it is that there has never been an online distribution of this game like not even steam has it like what the hell steam you didn't have road squadron 3d like okay there might be better road squadron games but road squadron 3d was fucking awesome and you should have had it anyways steam you really need to get your game up you're like like good old game beats you by one point because of road squadron 3d Sorry, getting off track because I'm just so excited about Rogue Squadron 3D because I played it in my past a lot and you get to plug in your joystick, which still works for this game, and you get to fly through the game and it is so much fun. You know, you know in fact, uh, it was so much fun, like even my sister wanted to play it and she played it and she really enjoyed it until uh, we got to, she got to the speeder part where you had to do the tow cable action on the AT-ATs and that was pretty much, it was like, uh, game ends not because, you know, bored or it sucks it was just those levels <sighs> all right so what is rogue squadron about it's a flight sim hence the joystick where i believe it takes place between uh a new hope and M the empire strikes back as uh where you play as luke skywalker although at one point you play as uh wedge antilles in the final battle i believe yeah, 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 in the final battle. Like, I fondly, fondly remember this game. If you ask me, like, almost anything about the game, I can probably remember it, except for maybe the uh, description dialogue for each mission. But I, I pretty much remember what you do in each mission. I remember where all the secrets are, because I I got gold medal on, like, pretty much every mission. And getting gold medal is very important, because if you get gold medals on all the missions, you get three bonus missions in the game, plus a special ending if it's a gold medal. And uh, basically, before I do the last mission to try and get a gold medal, I would, I would always make a copy of it, because if you don't, you won't get to see the special ending. And the, and the three bonus missions are um, 
racing through Beggar's Canyon, which is actually kind of interesting because for the most part, you're just shooting through the levels and you can also shoot down your squad mates just for laughs, but you know, they would kick you out of the mission for being an asshole. Uh, the battle at Hoth and uh, the Death Star run, which was a lot of fun. There's also a wide variety of uh, ships that you can pick to play through the missions with some exceptions and some extras too, because uh, if you put in a code, um, it was like you put in the word you put in, in the Pasco chicken. You get to play an ATSD uh, walker, but <laughs> playing that is actually really really shitty because you really can't do anything, and half the time you really need to fly. But hey, you're able to play it, and it's pretty amusing. It's 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 fun that they let you do it, and yeah, the passcode actually you can just unlock every single mission from it um, uh, if you put in a certain code. Like oh. The force is with you. That's the code, I believe, or something like that. Or use the force. Use da force, and then you unlock everything. But obviously, I enjoyed the game, so I didn't use that code. Aside from a few things, like uh, if you type in "good guy tie," you get to play a tie fighter earlier than uh, bef than having to unlock it. Oh, that's what you also unlock if you get gold on all the missions, or I think beat the missions in or game in general. But I think you have to get a gold to unlock it. I keep getting off track, so. You're, you're part of the Rogue Squadron, and you basically go through a bunch of missions or uh, levels completing mission objectives, and you get to pick your ships that you want to go through, like the uh, X-Wing, A-Wings, Y-Wings, and all the ships that are in this. My favorite ship in the game is the V-Wing, because that ship is awesome. It is awesome, and it does have flaws. Um, the flaws of that ship is that is I, I'm pretty sure it has the weakest shielding, like next to the A-Wing, and it has no R2-D2 unit to uh, repair the ship if it gets damaged. Uh, the Y-Wing and X-Wing have an R2 unit where if you get damaged, R2 will fix uh, you up somehow. Don't ask me how, but they fix you up, and it's a game mechanic, and uh, I'm willing to accept that, and it is pretty cool that like each ship has their own unique advantages and uh, disadvantages. So yeah, the advantage of the V-Wing is that I believe it's the second fastest ship. It has a rapid fire mode, which is awesome. And it has uh, cluster missiles, which really suck if you don't upgrade them. Because once you upgrade them, the secret cluster missiles, you just fire the missiles. And if there are enemies in the vicinity, you watch the fireworks and it's awesome. It makes getting gold on the missions really easy. And uh, if I had to say anything, I'd say just play through the missions. Don't worry about the medals except on the speeder missions. And I'll go on to that later why, but just go through that and wait till you get to almost next to the end where before you uh, defend Mon Calamari and go back to the missions with the Cluster Seeker uh, missiles with the V-Wing and just fuck everything up. It's amazing. Okay, it's amazing fun. So don't try to gold medal every single stage except for the uh, speeder missions. Oh, you even get to play at the Millennium Falcon if you uh, unlock everything. So that's another thing. They actually hint at it in the ending if you get the good ending. Mm, or when I say good ending, the gold ending. Let me think. Uh, but let's go into the bad stuff that I don't like about this game that I recently discovered. Uh, one of the bad things that I discovered in this game is that uh, most of your ships have lock-on lasers, which I knew it was there from the beginning, but, you know, uh, for some reason, I noticed it a little, a lot more in uh, this game, that, or in the, um, like, now than before, because before, as a kid, you know, you don't think about this stuff, and now that I'm older, I pay attention to these, like, tiny things. These homing lasers, it's helpful, and it's not helpful at the same time. So, if I say homing, I mean lock on, because homing means it actually tracks the uh, whatever you're shooting. So lock on lasers. So what these lock on lasers do that happens on most of the ships, like um, for example, X wing, A wing, uh, I believe Y wing. I haven't played it yet. Uh, basically, when you're close enough to an enemy ship and you fire, uh, your shots will not follow where your reticle is uh, aiming at. Instead, it will actually just kind of aim off and aim for the ships. Pretty helpful and kind of helpful for the casual players, but it is actually very, very annoying because now it's like your reticle is not very useful. Because if you're too far away and you're shooting, your shots are kind of really, really wide. But when you, but when you're close enough and you lock on, the shots actually kind of close in on the target, which sounds useful. That is until I got to playing the A-Wing and it was just a massive piece of fucking shit, okay? Here's what happened. Like, at the start of the level, um, I was playing uh, the third level, The Search for the Nona, where you get to play a new ship, the A-Wing, and basically, as soon as you start the level, you get attacked by uh, TIE Fighters. So, 
I got behind a TIE fighter, and you know, you're pretty much fucked if uh, you're behind an enemy ship, and like, or if someone's behind you and they start shooting at you, you're pretty much dead. Unless you have lock-on lasers. Here's what happens. The lock-on lasers all just flew over over the TIE fighter's head, and I'm like, I have the perfect shot, and the, la the lock-on laser is fucking me over, okay? Like I, I like there's also this thing where you're like depending on the ship you can change the firing mode of it where it fires like either uh, um, Separately like really really fast which is really really cool or like uh, at the same time and it would be like a Not double fire, but let's say on the x-wing There's a separate fire where you can fire all the shots individually or you can pair up the shots to shoot two at once or quad laser and like shoot Shoot four shots at once the a wing has separate shot and like double shots and both of them fucking miss Like I thought I was like because I was shooting separately. It just kept going over over um, the TIE fighters uh, uh, Ship so I switched to the to the uh, dual laser shot It still went over their head and because of the fucking lock-on laser like I I tried aiming with the uh, reticle didn't do shit the shot still went over so I so Oh, half the firefights really really fucking sucked because half the time I was missing I would really like it if there was an option where you could turn that off because uh, What's so great about the v-wing is it does not have that fucking bullshit like wherever you shot on your On your reticle it goes right where they're it there where it is unless uh, at least until like you know It disappears off screen and it doesn't count anymore But that's what I really liked about it and that's also the only good uh, the other good thing about the uh, speeder the uh, speeder aircraft, which um, I'm pretty sure it's just called the speeder. I have to go check it again, but you know that that's the one thing I fond I do not fondly like to remember because uh, whenever you have to play those missions, I'll get to it later. But it also has the uh, the it has no lock on laser, which is very very helpful, and it's the only other ship that has a uh, rapid fire that does not burn out. The V wing has rapid fire, but if you use it for too long, it, um, it burns out, and you have to wait till for the cannons to cool down. But anyways, the lock on lasers. They suck ass. I wish you were able to uh, get rid of it because, because I, I you know, it kind of feels like the game's helping me, and I don't really appreciate that. But like, I understand the purpose of it, but really, I wish you could turn that off because I was able to like the fourth level with the speeder. You have to play the speeder in this level. They don't give you a damn choice with the speeder. I was able to snipe ships in the background, and I was actually having fun because I, you know, my shots were not being messed up by the stupid uh, lock on uh, computer AI, and it was really annoying. So yeah, lock on lasers suck. And going to the speeder now. <sighs> There are missions in this game where you where you are forced forced to play a uh, speeder aircraft and the reason for that is because in that level there is going to be an AT-80 and AT-80 and you cannot shoot those down. I kind of wish you were able to shoot them down but you can't and the only way to take them down especially if you've uh, seen episode 5 uh, Empire Strikes Back you have to take them down with tow cable and the only ships with tow cables is the speeder bike. And it really, really sucks because um, the ship that that's only that's its only special power or special unique weapon is the tow cable, and you can't play any other ships. It's really fucking bo It's well, not boring. It's uh, it's a real shame because I don't get to uh, play with those, play with the other ships in those missions. At least not without like a uh, hacking the game and being able to play it. And and uh, even though I do shit on the speeder. The, the speeder ship it is actually a pretty good ship it has rapid fire no whole wing no lock on laser it has heavy armor plating but it can't recover health because there's no r2 unit and it has probably the best turn in the entire best like vehicle turning in the game because uh all the other ships they just only have one brake feature the speeder has two brake features where you can you have a left brake which makes you turn really really quickly to the left and or you know and vice versa to the right really really quickly and that was the only good thing. It's just, I, I hate those missions because you just can't play as other ships. Oh, in the other missions, you can play as a speeder. But in the speeder missions, you can only play as a speeder. It really, really sucks. I kind of wish, uh, I kind of wish there would be like a feature where it's like you have to defend, like you can pick another ship, but you, but you're, uh, you can pick another ship, but then you have to defend your ally from uh, dying so that they can take out the uh, speeder. I would have kind of liked that because if I'm playing a different ship, I can surely defend your ass from, you know, TIE fighters and TIE bombers, which is mostly what you'll be uh, facing, but it's a lot of fun. 
So yeah, I, I really did not like the speeder missions. And sometimes, because the, the requirements on some of the levels required you to be to do a whole bunch of things like kill enough enemies, do it fast enough, get some bonus items, uh, be very, very accurate. And when you're playing the speeder missions, you have no choice but to play as a speeder. I really, really did not like that. But I, like, damn the AT-ATs, I hate them. And even in the, and even in the Imperial Shipyard, it's like, you don't really need to, like, shoot down and uh, take down an AT-AT because it wasn't that important. But in, like, the fourth level, um, the faction at Corellia, like, uh, the AT-ATs were going to come and destroy the buildings where civilians were in. I understood that. So I was like, okay, I'll play an AT-AT. And that was, or a speeder. And that was the only, like, fun, uh, that was probably the only fun speeder mission. Aside from the Hoth one, because, you know, you want to relive through that event. So that was acceptable but the shipyard one like sucked ass i, I only uh, played far enough to unlock the uh the bombardment at yabin so i'm about to play the get to play the uh, y wings which are basically the bomb which are the bomber ships and that's why they sent them in and that's why the level is called bombardment at uh at yabin what else can i can i, can I say uh i kind of wish there was a co-op like a i actually i believe the n64 one has a two-player mode for it which you know you know the pc can't do that so oh, pc master race what two players we don't have that so i would actually like uh if they're like if they ever made a game in the future you can play uh, cooperatively in the game and you know that would be pretty damn cool like you know having your uh squad teammate and you know have also the multiplayer where you know it's the tie fighters versus the uh the rebels that'd be kind of cool too i would i would actually uh, play because i um i like to say i'm a pretty good pilot Especially uh, thanks to uh, Rose Squadron 3, which is not the best pilot game to go through, but I'm, I'm pretty conf confident in my piloting skills, so the force is with me and such. Uh, oh, right. I almost forgot. I was going to end the vlog on that note, but there is one more thing that's really annoying about this game is it's really, really difficult to uh, record for, which I wanted to do because I wanted to do a short video game review on it but no i gotta talk through it through this camera sort of but you know i'll still do like a quickie video on it but like it's really really annoying to record because if you see like my attempts to record it the screen is always flashing and it's just like it fucking it looks pretty shoddy so you know i would have liked it uh, if you were able to record this game properly that would have been a very very nice feature but other than that you know, Road Squadron is a great game, and it's finally on digital. It's finally being distributed digitally by Good Old Games. I highly, highly recommend this game, and I highly recommend uh, buying a joystick for this. Like, you will have tons and tons of fun with this, okay? This game is fucking awesome. Sure, there are much better Road Squadron games like TIE Fighter Attack and, uh, you know, the X-Wing Fighter and such. But you know what? Road Squadron 3D is still really, really fucking great. And I would still play it till the end of time. So with that said, on that note, until the next game, this is Wizard 100, you're the viewers, and I'm the vlogger on video log on games. Or video game logs, whichever title I go with.